Originally I intended to make a detailed codec comparison, but so-called objective approaches like PSNR metrics are pretty pointless when it comes to actual quality and subjective. Visual comparisons for every single codec are not really necessary when you do not intend to go below a certain quality anyway. Therefore I am taking a more general approach to the subject. I do however assume you know the basics of video encoding and things like the difference between lossless and lossy compression. Otherwise this whole thing might seem rather random. Still, there is a bewildering number of video codecs floating around and it can seem hard to choose the right one for a given task, but when it comes to high quality at low file sizes the situation presents itself quite straightforward. First off though I'd like to go further back to explain some general stuff. You can divide codecs into four types for the most part. The first generation began with MPEG-1 which was used in video CDs and TV mostly and has vanished almost completely. The second generation, MPEG-2, is the DVD and cable SD TV standard and still in widespread use. The third generation, MPEG-4 ASP, Advanced Simple Profile, is what common video codecs like XVID and DIVX use and more recent DVD players support too. The fourth and latest generation, MPEG-4 AVC, Advanced Video Coding, is implemented in the H.264 standard and used for Blu-ray as well as on most video platforms on the internet. Still, don't be fooled. AVC was adopted in 2003 and is there for almost 9 years old now. It can by no means be called bleeding edge technology. It has been under constant development though, so the most recent encoders are much better than the initial ones, but the standard, or generation, is still the same. There are very few other types of codecs that employ a completely different approach to compression. One of those is Dirac which uses Wavellet compression instead of discrete cosine transform and as such is based on different technology to the MPEG-4 standard, but it is slow and the results are not convincing quality-wise either, so it's not really worth considering. Mini codecs like Real or VP are not directly compatible with the standard, but are mostly built on it and do not employ completely different approaches to compression. Now while each generation introduced a considerable improvement in terms of quality per bitrate, this becomes more apparent the lower the bitrate and less noticeable the higher it is. Expressed in numbers, this roughly means bitrates of 1 to 2 megabit for SD and 3 to 4 for HD material, but is highly subject to source material complexity and opinion of course. Below these values, the quality difference between the different generations of codecs becomes increasingly distinct. The higher the bitrate however, the less important the choice of a certain codec will be. This is due to the fact that the techniques used to compress video, most importantly those relying on redundancy, have been mostly the same since the very beginning. The algorithms have been refined and deblocking filters have been improved, but if you are using high enough bitrates less artifacts are produced anyway and those fancy extras won't be of as much use anymore. You can easily see proof of that when you realize that the old MPEG-2 codec is still allowed for Blu-rays. The specification allows for bitrates of up to 40 megabit which is easily enough for all but the oldest codecs and those not even capable of handling HD material to produce results indiscernible from one another. At this point I'd like to comment on the bitrate that is actually needed to produce a certain level of quality because people often complain about the alleged bitrates needed to produce HD content or the lack of quality in lower bitrate material. Blu-ray discs offer 25 gigabyte of storage capacity per layer, so why not put the available space to good use? But that does not mean you actually need a bitrate of up to 40 megabit to provide excellent quality. In fact, 30 mbit is enough for the quantizer to saturate in many cases which means the output will be visually lossless. Forcing even higher bitrates does not improve the quality at all, while certain very low values, like less than 2 mbit, are definitely not sufficient to retain the desired quality. The 7 to 10 megabit offered by DVDs are good values even for HD material. 
The reason DVD movies have much lower quality than Blu-rays is not really the lower bitrate, but more importantly the fact that the original material is downscaled and heavily reduced in detail beforehand. Unfortunately DVD players do not support HD material or bit rates higher than 10 Mbit specification wise. But if you took high quality original material like they do to produce Blu-rays, scaled it to 720p, applied custom filters and quantization matrices, which I would expect from a professionally mastered DVD anyway, and used all of the 8.5 GB available on a regular dual-layer DVD, the resulting bitrate would be high enough to produce very good results even with the old MPEG-2 codec, especially if you are watching it on a TV screen more than 2 meters away. And if you are watching on a PC, you can use some post-processing filters to make up for the smaller viewing distance. In any case the quality would be much better than today's average DVD production. Lastly, let me give a quick overview, when it comes to choosing your preferred codec. You have a few options, if you need to compress your video to a very small file size with the best quality possible, which is probably most important when uploading something because of limited bandwidth, the best choice is definitely the most up-to-date codec. There are still a large number of H.264 codecs to choose from, but their results are fairly similar. X264 is definitely one of the best is updated frequently and is also the only free one. If you do not care about alternatives, you don't have to bother really. In other respects, the latest version of Real is also quite good, but the available so-called free encoder does not allow you to change any of the preset settings and compatibility and handling of real files is generally horrible. The same goes for QuickTime. Google's VP8 codec is a great disappointment in my opinion, because even though it provides fairly good quality, it is even worse in terms of implementation, as, even though it is supposed to be free, the only available free encoder is not working properly and playback support is horrible. And it's not at all optimized in terms of speed either. You would think a company like Google could easily develop a cutting-edge product, but instead they just bought the codec from on2, changed only a few things, released it under their name and didn't bother to update anything after that. Microsoft did almost the same thing, only that they didn't buy their Windows Media Video codec from another company. Instead they barely improved their old software from 2003, bought themselves in on having their codec used on the Blu-ray and left it at that. Furthermore, in my opinion WMV is probably the worst of all the mentioned codecs. If you care only about quality and not so much about file size, because you want to burn something onto a DVD for example, you can choose your codec based on things like encoding decoding speed or compatibility, in which case third generation ones like DiveX or 3IVX, also called ThriveX, are a good choice, unlike almost all AVC codecs except X264. Most of the ASP codecs are available for free for private use, but are not necessarily royalty free, which means you would have to pay a fee if you wanted to sell a movie or something you produced with that codec. In that case you could choose Thera, a completely free and open source codec or XFID, basically the free version of DiveX, which is commercial. That's the general summary. If you'd like me to go into detail on a certain question, Please feel free to ask.